Hi, it's Grandpa Bill. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I, there are so many dreams and little things here in a specific order that I'm afraid I'll miss something if I don't just read this to you. So, here we go. The Holy Spirit has been giving me a series of dreams that have puzzled me. He always uses dreams that make me think. Think hard until I understand the meaning behind them. With this series of dreams, I couldn't understand why they were supposed to fit together into one video, like the Holy Spirit wanted. In my thinking, they needed a theme, but the Holy Spirit wasn't saying anything. Finally, I did some serious praying about the dreams before I went to bed. In the next three days in a row, I was awakened with these words, the sands of time. I'm a little thick-headed at times, and this was one of those times because I still didn't get it. What was the Holy Spirit trying to tell me? So the Holy Spirit reminded me of some of my memories. When I put those memories together, they spelled it out for me. First, when I was in the Navy, I used to love to beachcomb, and as I walked along, I would absentmindedly pick up a handful of dry sand. As I continued on, I would look at that handful of sand from time to time and notice that the quantity would be a little less. Try as I might, the sand would always slip through my closed fingers as I wandered along the beach. Over time, all that remained was a bit of dust reminding me that I'd once held sand in my hand. Then I remembered that time, like sand, slips through your fingers as well. It was then that I understood that the phrase, the sands of time, was the theme that tied all of the dreams together. He was warmer than a summer breeze. He was softer than his silver hair. He was brighter than the twinkle in his eye As he rested in his easy chair And I remember how he used to smile And tell me all about the folks back then And if I had my way, you know I'd be there today And I'd do it all over again Well, the Holy Spirit wasn't going to let me off that easy. He dusted off a memory that I had hidden in the back closet of my mind. You see, I was walking home from school this first time that I saw that little old Hispanic lady. She was walking toward me, most likely en route to the Catholic Church, which was only about a block away by then. She moved very slowly due to her advanced years, and she was wearing all black, which made me think she was a widow and was softly praying the rosary as she walked. Even from a distance, it seemed that she was frightened of something. So I decided to say hello when I got close enough. I just knew that she needed someone to brighten her day. Sure enough, when I got close, I said hello. To my surprise, her fear turned to terror. It was a terror so thick you could feel it. Questions raced rapidly through my mind, and as they did, I could actually feel the icy cold fingers of terror begin to squeeze the breath right out of her. What had I done wrong? Was she afraid because I used English rather than Spanish? Was it because I was a male? Was it because I was white? Was I just too close? My mind couldn't find an answer. But I had to do something to calm her down. But what? She was holding that rosary like it had some religious power to ward me off. She was pointing the cross right at me. I truly wanted her to know that I meant her no harm, but didn't know how to tell her. Anything I did was sure to make her fear worse than it was. So I crossed the road and went on my way. I walked past her from time to time throughout my 7th and 8th grade years. Each time I would cross the road and give her a little peace. But you know, really what I wanted was for all of her fear to be gone. I never did think of a way to make that happen, and time slipped through my fingers like sand. I still wish that I could have told her 
that it wasn't the cross on a string of beads that made me cross the road. It was my heart yearning to help her find that peace. Now you know one of my memories that haunt me from time to time. I let time itself keep slipping away until all that remains is a bit of dust on the memory of something I failed to do. I guess I'd better go through those dreams now. I'll start with September 22nd and work through them. Here's the first dream. I was on a trip with my mom and dad. We were traveling in my four-door, one-ton Ford truck, and I knew that our journey was coming to an end at some unknown point. Dad reached over and put the truck in a sort of autopilot mode, and the three of us somehow jumped ahead to our destination, where we were waiting for the truck to arrive. Suddenly I realized that the truck was only a block or two away, and when it arrived, my journey through this life would be over. Mom reassured me that she's been comforting me and will do so until the truck arrives. Dad then reassured me that he's been lending me his strength so I can keep going. And he'll continue until my time comes as well. Here's a little side story that will explain what I think was going on. You see, Mom was dying from cancer and asked God for more time to be with Dad. So God gave her a little over four more years before taking her home. The Holy Spirit told me early in 2017 that I was going to die in August. Sure enough, I started having pain in my abdomen that August. It continued to get worse for a couple of days. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say, It's time to go to the emergency room. The Holy Spirit doesn't say something to me straight out like that unless it's really important. At the emergency room in Globe, I was told that they were going to send me to a bigger hospital in Mesa. The entire pain-filled trip is somehow gone from my memory, but I count that a blessing. That night, they had to call Dr. Lopez back in for emergency surgery. I know. You're saying, Grandpa Bill, you didn't die because you're telling me right now what happened. Well, you're right, but God answers our prayers. There were people all over the world praying for me that night. And, by the way, I did die. I died on the way to the operating room, and I was revived. Then I died on the operating table and was revived again during the first of three surgeries. You see, the gangrene wouldn't stop spreading, and Dr. Lopez had to go in two more times. But I didn't know because the pain medicine they gave me kept me out of everything. When I finally was awake and had my senses back after the surgery, the last surgery, I remember clearly that my mom was there with me comforting me, but I couldn't help but wonder why I didn't see my dad. When I was awake, I was only using my right arm and right leg, which worried my wife. My dad suffered from a brain tumor, though, most of his life, and after they removed that tumor, dad couldn't use his left side. Sometimes I'm a little slow, but I finally realized that it was dad's way of letting me know that he was giving me strength. He had been there for me all of the time. After that, I started to slowly recover. It has been a little over four years now, which makes me think that my extra time is about used up. To explain my reasoning, I'm using mom's extra four plus years to measure my time. I didn't pray for more time like mom. But I did talk to God about how much I wanted to be taken in the rapture. What a thrill ride that's going to be. Again, in my thinking, perhaps mom and dad asked God to allow them to help me get that gift. Think about this. I can't believe that it's normal for only 18 inches of small intestine to keep a person alive. 
Now, I took you down that rabbit trail so you would have a little insight into how I'm thinking. But we better get back to the dream. As we waited for the truck to arrive, Dad began to show me that things in heaven defy earthly logic. For instance, Dad was holding a red rubber ball in the palm of his hand and then turned his hand palm down and the ball stayed in place. He did it with a big smile on his face as he pretended that it was a magic trick. Suddenly I was jarred awake by the sound of a loud air raid siren. And as I woke up, the sound faded. But I knew that China and Russia were on the verge of attacking America. Also, I know that there are Christians everywhere praying for America and God is listening. This dream was about the fact that the sands of time are quickly slipping through our fingers. So church, look up, for your redemption draweth near. The next morning I was awakened again with the sound of the Holy Spirit speaking to me. He said, pack a bug out bag, make it light for climbing in the mountain. The sands of time are slipping away, America, and you need to wake up to that fact. A few days later, I was again awakened by the sound of the Holy Spirit speaking to me. This time he said, When the flood hits Superior, your brother and his wife are among five small groups of people that will not be drowned by the waters. Again, the sands of time have almost completely slipped through your fingers, America. Then on October 15th came this surprise. What the Holy Spirit said was, there will be no confrontation. No one will die from that, meaning the attack. But he was also meaning Christians. You see, now I'm thinking that the sands of time for the church are almost completely gone, and Jesus is at the door. We're out of here before the really bad stuff happens. On October 23rd, I found myself living the life of a young man that had accepted Jesus after the rapture. He had three visits from the police. On the first visit, they came to the door of his parents' home, looking for him, but his parents had hidden him. His mom opened the door and told them that he wasn't there, and they went away. They wanted him because he hadn't taken the kill shot, you know, the jab in the arm. On the second visit, his parents hit him again, and again they went away. This time it was because he had refused the mark of the beast. Then finally on the third visit, even though his parents hit him, the police broke in and tore the house apart until they found him. Then they drug him away to be executed. This last time, he had done something worthy of death. He had become a Christian. I had this dream three times in a row, so take heed. If you keep on thinking that you're going to someday get around to Jesus, you know, sooner or later I'll get to it, you're going to miss the rapture. And it's going to be rough then. Well, if you're thinking that these dreams sound like final warnings, you're right. The sands of time will soon run out for those who have accepted Jesus, and they will be gone, leaving any who accept him after the rapture to be tested greatly. On October 24th, the Holy Spirit showed me my laptop, my camera, and my microphone. I use them to... Uh, share with you things that I've been shown. They were all covered with thick spider webs because they no longer could be used. Could it be no electricity? How about no internet? How about nothing allowed about God? Your guess is as good as mine. For now, we're in a brief calm before the storm. The storm is going to start when that last grain of sand drops. You know, the time when the Christians are all gone. I would like to give you a little bit to think about. If America prays, 
God will give more time for people to accept his gift of salvation. So please, pray for your loved ones. Pray for America. Remind them that the gift of salvation was purchased through the sacrifice of God's only Son, Jesus. If you haven't accepted Jesus by now, please do it before the sands of time have slipped through your fingers as well. Now would be a perfect time to do it. Just pray something like this with me right now. If you can't right now and choose later, don't wait too long. By the way, let the words come from your heart. The Bible does say that we confess with our mouth, so we are going to pray together. So if that's you and you're ready, pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and I invite you to come and live within my heart. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord, which means you are first in my life. I want to repent. I want to turn away from that sin, from everything that you call sin, Lord. And I ask you to show me those things so that I will know. I commit to obey you every day for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me and it came from your heart, you're now a child of God. And one day, you'll be walking those streets of gold with me. Maybe we'll get to spend some time together walking and talking about this moment. I look forward to that. You have a blessed day.